Hello, everyone. My name is Julie McVeigh, and this is Unordinary Made Ordinary, where we talk about extraordinary experiences of everyday people. And today I am speaking with Luann Beecher. And welcome. Thank you so much for having me on your program. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I love all things spiritual. And so anytime I can talk about that, I'm happy to do so. Awesome. Yes. And um, I am so happy that you took the time to do this. I'm looking forward to this conversation and getting to know you. Um, and so having said that, maybe you could just share a little bit about yourself and a little background. Sure. So currently, because what I do changes, <laughs> I go down my spiritual path. Um, I am a medium. I am a spiritual teacher. I often think I'm a better teacher than I am a medium, but some people may say differently. I love teaching mediumship and allowing people to have their own personal experience. And I feel like I get as much out of their learning and their understanding and their growth as they do. So teaching is probably my passion. I also enjoy doing healing. Um, oh. Reiki master, I do trance healing. Um, healing is something, one of those things in the beginning, I went, mm, man, I'm not doing that. But that's been a lot of my journey <laughs> has been, yeah, I'm not doing that. And then I find myself in the midst of it. Um, I also... I'm going to say within the last year, year and a half, was introduced to mandalas. Mm -hmm. And I have tweaked them to make them personal mandalas that's like a reading. So okay. I allow images and things to come to me and I put them in mandala form. And then once it's done, I look at it from a different perspective and do a reading based on what I've drawn. Okay. I'm going to have different. to, I'm, yeah. So before I, I you ask you other that questions, one. what is men, what is that? I don't, I have not heard that before other I than mean, the mandala, mandala is, effect you know, or something. I'm sure you know what a mandala is. If you were to see it, it's, it usually starts in circles, so it doesn't have to, and it moves out and it's different designs within Oh, the mandala. They're usually circles. Sometimes they have um, threads coming down with leaves, leaves on the bottom of them. If you've seen a dream catcher, it's similar to that, except it has different symbols and patterns and more patterns. Um, and I was introduced to a class um, on mandalas and it kind of took its own journey with me. Interesting. So, yeah, they take, okay. they take me a long time. Um, some people can just do them really quickly. Uh, a personal mandala for me takes me probably two to three weeks to do. Whoa. And they're nine by 12. All right. So are you artistic naturally? Didn't think so, but <laughs> apparently there's something, you know what? I'm, do you want me to show you one? Sure. Yes. If you could. Um, So when I do them, I make copies of them. So these are copies. They aren't actually the mandalas themselves. Um, so this is one, I don't know if you can mm. see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That I did for a, radi uh, a group of women that did radiation for women with breast cancer. Uh-huh. And I was just inspired to do it. Um, so, okay, I, I have questions. I'm going to go back and ask okay. you, but can you, so would you explain how do you use this? How does this work with your practice of mediumship? I'm not connecting the dots yet. I'm not sure that it connects with mediumship. It's oh. more about a spiritual journey oh. and where you are. Like I did one for businesses. I have one for a wedding. Um, my grandson, here's one, here's one that was done. I don't think she'll mind if I show it. That was her journey at the time. 
Wow. And those are the, and I don't know what I'm going to draw until I start drawing it. Gosh, that's I really asked people cool. what they want to put into it. She wanted her cat in it. So she okay. sent me a picture of the cat. Uh-huh. But I think everything else in it um, so just came to me. And then on the back, I type up the reading based on the symbols. Oh, my goodness. And I There's made a class you know, in this you can take to learn how um, to do this. I could teach it. I don't know that I could teach, but I've taught mandalas, drawing mandalas. I haven't actually huh. taught a class on how to do this. Okay. But it was just something that grew out of it. Oh, um, wow. So this, I did one for my grandson for Christmas. It's got his oh, dog my gosh. And all the things that he loves. Oh, wow. But I, I don't love know that it. I would have considered huh. myself artistic before this. Really? Well, yeah. clearly you are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but wow. yeah, I love doing them. It just, they take me really long because I, I don't know what they're going to look like until they're done. So I may that's think that's so fascinating. I, I've never heard of this before. Uh, I don't know anybody else that's doing them. Okay. Um, it's just something that came out of a simple mandala class. Um, and that is fascinating. Then it became personal. For so me. when you're doing the mandala, when you're starting to, you know, you get some information from someone and you start creating, mm -hmm. then you read after that you... i don't read it until it's completely done wow okay because i like uh, one of them that i did recently i thought it was just drawing half you know i have my circle and i'm just drawing half circles around the outside but then the next circle that went around it once i put a design there they turned into owls like when i looked at it huh. i'm like oh Okay. The shape of owl. So I I'm really intrigued by this. It kind of fits because you were mentioning before we hit record, and I hope that beep is not going on. Can you hear that? No, I don't hear any beep. Oh, good. I hope that doesn't get recorded. I don't know how to turn that on. And I hadn't really um, planned on talking about the Mendels, but they popped into my head. Really? So apparently, see I'm that? I have an analytical mind too. You were saying earlier that you have I'm an analytical mind, and that looks like something I could actually learn and enjoy but anyway i have never heard of anything like that that's really cool well i'm but, happy to talk to you sometime and give you yes guidance in the beginning but be okay so let's backtrack i okay. i want it so you shared a little bit of background and if there's mm -hmm. anything else you wanted to share please do and then i wanted to know what was the first thing that got you interested into like these spiritual topics in the first place I, you know how long ago was know, it uh, it's been about 20 years now, probably over 20 years now. Um, I was not the person that as a child saw spirit, felt spirit. Okay. I was, I, I think I had an interest and a thought process as to that there's got to be more out there. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think I really pursued it all that much. And then um, there was a woman that came here from England. She was a medium who had, I didn't know who he was at the time. I'd studied under Gordon Higginson. So if anybody doesn't know who Gordon Higginson is, look him up. He's like Gordon Higginson in the mediumship yeah. world. Okay. Um, she had studied under him and I didn't know him, know her, didn't care. I thought that she was a fake mm. that I never thought about mediumship in that way talking to the dead which now I know there are no dead <laughs> but uh I went to see her to prove her as a fake and a fraud <laughs> and I know I'm cool. a, <laughs> I, said, I, mean, I was the worst sitter ever sometimes that's the best way to that's the best believers the strongest believers are the ones that try and disprove it in there yes it so she everything. had started a reading she was bringing through some man named carl i had no idea who carl was she told me he was of german descent he was surrounded by women and i'm like okay i don't know who it is and that so then i'm like see got see. you <laughs> <laughs> and then she started talking about my grandmother and started bringing through information about my grandmother that i couldn't deny and something inside of me went this is important, pay close attention. Mm. 
And it was during that reading, she brought to my grandmother, and I don't remember all of it now, um, but she told me that I was a medium and oh. that I had this huge band of spiritual teachers on the other side that were just waiting for me to open the door. And wow. I was like, yeah, no, that's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> not interested in that. But it started me on a journey of exploring. And I started reading, and I remember this is probably the late 90s. I started mm -hmm. reading books written by Sylvia Brown, which mm -hmm. at that time, she was the go-to person. Right. And some of the things in the books, more about the spirit world, not the actual doing mediumship, but the spirit world and what was involved really made me aware that these were thoughts and feelings that I had had my whole life about just what happens to us after we die. I don't feel like we just become put in the ground and we become worm food. I yeah, mean, there poof. was more right. to it, but I never really explored it until she said it was a medium to which I said no, mm. and then explored it anyway. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you had no religious background at all? and I was born and raised a Methodist. My mother was one of those. Uh, she would go to church because my father was very involved. Um, he was the deacon, the elder, the Sunday school superintendent, uh, all those things. She had had conversations with me that I don't have to go to church to be with God. I can sit in the backyard underneath the tree mm -hmm. and be as connected to him as going to church. So that's where she kind of came from. But my dad, up until he passed, was very involved in the church. Hmm. Um, even though at the end of his life, we used to talk about my mediumship all the time because he hmm. wanted to understand it. He didn't judge it because I think he's my dad. <laughs> He loves Aww. me, so he didn't. Oh, that's nice. But that's very nice. I was never judged. I was never. Wow. Um, I don't think my mother would have judged me had she been living. Oh, um, that's great. My family has, as far as, at least to my knowledge, no one has turned their back on me because of what I do. Wow. That's, that's, I know. I'm wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm really, really fortunate. Yeah. Very fortunate. To the point that my dad now, when I teach mediumship, there are lessons that I will have my dad come in as a teacher from the other side Whoa. and have them connect with him. So, wow. Yeah. And he was a teacher when he was living. Okay. So teaching was his career. So huh. I think it's a natural progression going to the spirit world and still loving what you did here, but doing it from a different place. Okay, so you so you 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 realize that eventually you start to you accept that you're a medium. So how did that happen? You know, you go to this medium and sh you realize, okay, maybe this is there's some truth to this. And right. then what what happened? After I, well, I had a year to explore it because she came back in the summer for I think three years. Um, and when she would come back in the summer, she would work with me with the mediumship. And she would have, oh. I called them meetings at her house. Now I understand they're called circles, but back then I didn't know they were called oh. a circle. I mean, I was like, I didn't know anything about any of this. Um, and there well, was I don't one... know a whole lot myself, so. <laughs> so I'm learning, I'm enjoying this, I'm learning. Good, I'm glad, I'm happy to share with you. It was at one of her circles when we were just sitting there and she said, sit across from somebody and she had us visualize a, an image mm -hmm. and hear with your thoughts and feel from the middle of your belly huh okay because that's where the personality manifests so i'm okay. i'm just doing what i'm told and i'm sitting across from this girl and I'm telling her about seeing a man and that he was blonde and that hmm. his pa his passing was tragic. And I didn't, she told me later he had committed suicide. That's about as tragic yeah. as you can get. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that 
that kind of freaked me out was that I said, okay, I'm going to try and get a name. Just why okay. not? Why not? And so I'm like, okay, it starts with an S. And she said, yes. And I wow. said, oh. his name is Steve. Now my husband's name is Steve. So I just thought, oh, I'm just going into an S. It must be Steve. And she said, his name was Steve. And we both like wow. freaked out. I'm like, I need a break. She said, so did I. And then I got in, we walked outside and then I got in trouble with um, the teacher because of the energy, the building of the energy in the room oh, no. that we had. So I had a lot to learn. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's amazing though. I know that it was, that, I mean, wow. So okay. that was probably my first like <laughs> um, acceptance that this is possible. It's possible. Yeah. It still took me a while to be convinced. Um, I think most people that follow mediumship at all know who John Edward is. Yeah. And he had a TV show at the time called Crossing Over. Right. With John right. Edward. And I kept thinking, you know, it's like, I think it's possible. I think it's possible, but I need proof. And if okay. there's proof, if one person can prove to me that this is real, then I know that it's not just for one person, mm. that there are other people that have disability. So my husband, unbeknownst to me, had bought me tickets to go see John Edward on Long Island. What a coincidence. And it was shortly <laughs> after nine. I know. It was very shortly after 9-11. So okay. uh, emotion, and it was on Long Island. So mm. you're in the New York area. Emotions were very raw. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we went into, it was kind of a theater in the round kind of a thing. And he was in the middle and I'm watching and I'm listening. Mm -hmm. And at one point, my husband looks at me and said, what part of this do you not believe could be real? Hmm. But I'm just, I was analyzing every little thing that was sure. being said. I mean, no. I'm looking for mics. I'm looking for anything that could be fake. <laughs> sure. And course. I didn't find it. And he john edward changed my life that day because he wow. came for me the one person that i believed mm -hmm. could truly communicate with those that had crossed over and that meant if he could do it so could other people and that maybe i was one of those people wow so hmm. i don't that's... even remember this stuff till i start talking about it and i'm like oh yeah and that and that it's been 20 yeah. years so yeah that well that's probably pretty memorable though um what happened there but um gosh so so you have met your guides then by my this guides time. No, yes um so yes i have i actually teach a course on spirit guides now oh um there's a woman by the name of rose vanden enden that wrote a book called mm. so you want to be a medium oh and it's an excellent book. Um, it's not overcomplicated. It gives you exercises and things to do. And one of the chapters is about meeting your guides. Okay. And she talked about that we all have five main guides. And by main guides, she meant they were with you before you were born. They stay with you your entire life. Okay. And then you reunite with them when you pass oh and they are a joy guide a teacher guide a chemist guide which has to do with the physical body um i'm missing joy teacher chemist teacher chemist master i'm leaving one out one my more. guides are not going to be happy anyway there's five i know okay emotional <laughs> no no isn't that awful no. i'm like totally drawing a blank um, but I met, I started to do meditations to meet my guides Okay. and I would get information that I couldn't know that I looked it up after. So as an example, my chemist guide, um, is a woman okay. by the name of, I thought it was Ephema. I've later learned over the years, it's Ephema. 
Okay. But she told me that she worked with the medicine men. Okay. And that she had lived on the border of Zimbabwe and Mozambique. Now, for me, I'm whole, geography is not my thing. I had no idea if Zimbabwe and Mozambique actually bordered each other until I got out a map. Gotcha. Okay. And as I found out, they do border each other. Gotcha. Okay. That's cool. I yes. mean, that you can confirm it, you know, That's something that, that you well, know that you don't know. And they're like, I don't know. And then you can go and confirm it. Yeah, I'm, I'm big yeah. on evidence and having to be proven. And yes, um, protector guide. Oh, protector just, guide. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, you want that one. Um, so my protector guide had given me information up that he was. Um, and this is going to sound like, oh, okay, everybody has a Native American guide. He's Native American. Mm -hmm. We don't all have a Native American guide. Okay. <laughs> but some people will say 90% of the people in the United States have a Native American guide. Hmm. I find throughout my working with people that that's not necessarily true. Okay. But I, I do happen to have one. Um, so these are all, the and, all five guides are generally um, people that have had or or spirits, I guess, that have had human lives. They or have not had. That's what, do you, could you have an alien guide or no? Um, not in my understanding. My okay. understanding is that our guides hmm. are here to help us to get through, maneuver through, guide and support us on our earthly journey. Okay. And they have lived before. And okay. that's what makes them excellent guides is because they've experienced at These least things, one right. life Interesting. on earth okay. and then they continue to develop on the other side and then become guides so for me i'm going to say alien no unless it's an alien that's had a life a uh, human life oh right which is that possible you know who knows okay interesting yeah. mm-hmm <laughs> very, very interesting. When did you meet your guides? Like how far into your practicing mediumship? I was probably two or three years in. And I, and I don't want to make it sound like, oh, I met this one, then I met this one. It was a, it was a process of a couple of years. Um, okay. And through meditation, always through your meditative practices. Yes. And Pretty where, much. where, where did you learn the meditative practices? And can you share just a little bit on what the, your, what your practices are like? Um, when, I, well, when I first started meditating, I did a lot of guided meditation because I have monkey mind, which means that my brain and mind don't like to settle down. Sure. Right. So for me, it takes five or 10 minutes for my mind to finally be, I That's call pretty it fast. <laughs> a, a really <laughs> uh, calmness or a stillness that it doesn't try to take control. Okay. Because I can easily start a guided meditation and I'm off on a tangent somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, when I worked with the guides, I would sit just for the purpose of what do I receive? So I might play mellow music in the background, but I did not guide myself okay I would just get in touch with my breathing and then wait for my mind to shut down however long that took and then just invite whoever in and whatever impressions I got I would write down so these are these are our visual impressions audio clairaudience uh, you know yes, telepathy yes. and Sen yes. sensing and all of them yes all of it mm. all of it i tend to be more clear audience which means that i'm more not hearing with my outside ears but yes. hearing inside more like thoughts they feel like thoughts that are placed in my mind that i know are not my thoughts okay they aren't thoughts that i generate it, and it's literally like it pops in and I'm right. aware of it. So it's almost like I'm watching the thoughts. Yeah. Okay. I've heard that before. That's very interesting. I mean, um, some people say they hear in their, like a voice, not from the outside, but the, in some people do hear from the outside, but some people hear right. on the inside sort of, Yeah. and then, um, it'll be in a voice. 
a different voice than their own. Some people have said it's their own voice. For me, it's my own voice. Okay. And then, so, yeah, it's the, all these different ways of receiving yes, communication, it sounds like. Absolutely. And for me, I would get confused as to, okay, is this my thought or is this a spirit thought? Because yeah. if it's my thought, I dismiss it. But if it's a spirit thought, I pay attention. <laughs> right, right. So what I've learned over time is that spirit voice in my head comes on the right side my mind's thoughts come from the left side interesting okay so if i have a thought that i'm not sure okay is that just me or is that some kind of guidance i will stop for a minute and feel where do i feel that thought coming from from this side or from this side. I wonder if that has anything to do with, you know, how the right side they say is more of the creative area and the left is more of analytical. Um, it could be, but I, I do an exercise with the students where I give them a thought or, or a, a safe sentence and I tell them, okay, now I want your mind to generate this thought. Okay. Now, I, and we work mm-hmm. with the ego. Okay. I want your ego to generate this thought and say this to you. Where do you feel it? And now I'm, I'm inviting spirit to come in and place this thought in your mind. Where do you feel them coming from? Now, some people feel it coming from the side, from the left hmm. or from the right. Some people from the back. Um, okay. So, yeah, it seems to be different with everyone. Okay. But I understand what you're saying because, yeah, for me, spirit's right side. And I've wondered that. Is that because? Yeah. Um, that tends to be the more imagination, visualization side of the brain. Yeah. But if you think about when I explained earlier that I'm more left brain and more analytical, I'm an overthinker. Um, if they right. came from the left, I would, it would probably drop into that part of my mind that I would then overanalyze everything. Mm. Where if mm. I feel it from this side and more accepting. Right. So I think it just depends on the person. I don't know. We're all different. We all received differently so over the years how are are there any uh really profound experiences that stand out to you that you'd want to share either with your own personal life or when you've helped somebody else um i can say for my own personal life because like i said this wasn't something that i went looking for it kind of came to me it it has changed me in what I'm going to say is profound and beautiful ways. Mm. I find that I'm much more compassionate, Mm -hmm. less judgmental. Um, I've always kind of been that person that I'm a giver. Giving to people makes me happy Um, to the point that I had to set strict boundaries because (laughs) I would give it, give it, give it, give it. Sure, right. Um, But there's something that's just magical that happens when you can deliver a message from someone's loved ones and they come to the realization that Mm. that person is not really dead yeah wow it's life changing Mm. and it's not just evidence is important but I find that in a good reading it's not just the words it's not Oh, you know, she was the hairdresser that drove the blue car that, you know, lived in Kentucky. It's when that soul starts saying, and I see what's going on in your life. And I see that you have an upcoming move. And, And then they start expressing their love and what it's like for them in the spirit world. And yeah, it's the essence of that soul that can be felt in the room it's palpable in a good reading they're not all not all readings are good sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't is that can you explain why is that related to the person getting the reading reading or the person that they're trying to connect to or both i think it's um a a good reading is a three-way everybody's involved the sitter okay the medium and the spirit communicator I personally find that if a soul coming through a spirit communicator has things in their life 
that are similar to things in my life, it's an easier connection. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, right. It's interesting because if I do a demonstration of mediumship and I can be in California, I might be in Chicago, Arizona. If there's somebody in the audience that has someone in spirit that's from upstate New York, because I grew up in upstate New York, inevitably, yeah. that's the person I get. Yeah, <laughs> I get the yeah. person from upstate New York. Um, but I think that could be easier. I think the role of the sitter, which is the person receiving the reading, is vital to the process working okay. because what I have found happens is that if you're going to a medium, there's somebody that you truly want to connect with. Mm -hmm. And without explaining to that sitter that they need to be open to all souls that come in, that sometimes you might get a grandmother first or you might to accept what's coming that that soul might be the one that brings in the person that it is that mm. you want to hear from mm. and with some people when they don't understand that they will dismiss the because they'll say no 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 because it's not the person that they want to hear from right not right. that they don't recognize it's the grandmother but they'll go no no because they want to get yeah to yeah the loved one that so you know it's a really tricky process um, as to why it works sometimes. And sometimes I just think for whatever reason that we don't know, it just doesn't work. Mm. <laughs> a medium cannot be a medium for every single person. And sometimes as the medium, we have to say, I'm sorry, this just right. Isn't, which right. Is sad, you know, and you give them to somebody else. Ha have you learned anything uh, surprising about the afterlife? And um, how Ooh, good question. your your um, your feelings about death now is it just completely? I mean, I'm sure your feelings about that's completely changed after all. They this. have very much changed um, to the point that I'm really struggling. I think some days with the amount of fear in the world mm. because my fear, you know, everybody's afraid death, 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 death. You know, yes. do this, do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. Not judging anybody. Everybody, in my opinion, is the right to their own personal opinions and what they want to do. But it's the judgment of others that don't want to follow the way that they think that I think is really harmful. And that fear in the world is palpable. Right. For me, if I'm supposed to die by COVID, You're... I don't really feel like right, <laughs> there's right. much I can do about it. Um. Just no so, fear of no fear of death at this point. It's just like, yeah, it's me, just no. my next I mean, chapter I'm in my life. It's easy. <laughs> I'm hoping it's easy. <laughs> I don't know it to be a struggle. Oh, but, you mean the you dying know, process, of course. Dying process, yeah. I don't know that itself. anybody would say, Oh, yeah, I want to suffer and yeah, no, no, <laughs> have a really no. slow death. <laughs> no. But you know what? The ones that have the slow death, I think, have the easier crossing when they get there. Because oh. they're not caught off guard. Oh, instead of I've like often a wondered this. Oh. People, everybody says they want to die in their sleep, but if you die in your sleep, there's you, no oh. warning. Yeah, there's that's no, weird. Right. I never thought about that before. And, well, yeah. I mean, I thought about yeah, it'd be great to die in your sleep, but now that I've experienced, you know, out of body experiences personally, like, what if I died while I was, you know, I was having an out of body experience? <laughs> what if and, I don't come back? Right. And then I'm like, <laughs> hey, body. Get up. What's going on here? <laughs> I don't know. Absolutely. Yes. Oh. Um, <laughs> profound. You would ask me something else. Oh, about the uh the other side. Yeah. I think that the other side is much more beautiful and much more compl complicated than what our physical mind limitations can accept. And I, you know, what's interesting too, I find that in working with spirit, when they try to work with us too, they struggle with us too, mm. that I've had to sit down sometimes after a reading and say, I really struggle with that. And they, you know, the thoughts come in my mind of, we struggled with you too. <laughs> you, know, you didn't make it too easy on us. Right. So I, I've learned to adapt my mediumship by sitting with spirit and being open to whatever I get. Okay. Wow. 
So you, so, so apparently people can learn how to do this. Yes. I mean, that's I, I one of my feel. questions. Like, I, I mean, that's are you born with cool. it? Do you have it or not have it? Yes. I think the ability is available to everyone. Mm -hmm. I don't, but I think it's like, I equate it to playing the piano. As long as you have fingers, you can play the piano. Some people will just learn to right. pack at the keys. Along. Mm -hmm. You know, some people will do it and not like it. Does that mean they can't do it? No, it doesn't mm. mean they can't do it. It's just not their thing. Right. I right. think for mediumship, it's a soul calling. It's okay. why part of why you came here to serve. And when it's your calling, it's, I don't want to say it's not a struggle. It is a struggle. For me, it was a struggle. I'm, I'm what I call a snail. I did not zip through a mediumship course and be like, oh, I can talk to the dead. For me, it's been a slow yeah. overthinking, working through it, which I'm yeah. fine with that. Yeah. So I tell people like, if it takes you a long time, that's not a bad thing. It means you're honoring everything you're taking in. Right. I get that. I relate but, to that. Yeah. Can it, can anybody do it? I think anybody has some ability to be able to connect. Mm -hmm. um, people, like you say, don't really want to talk about it, but there's signs, there's symbols, there's, there's some things that just happen that it's like, there's no explanation for. Right. So, you know, it is actually spirit and it's beautiful when it happens. Absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that everybody should be medium. I think there's a whole much more to it. You don't you I'm trying to think. It's the essence of what you become. When you become a medium, it's not what you do, it's who you are, it's what you are. Hmm. It's one thing to call yourself a medium, but it, it's what you are. Okay. At a soul level. Right, right. And for those of us that thrive on the rush that I can get off of a good reading or connection with spirit, it fuels me to keep going. Yeah, you know, I bet. There's, there's times I want to walk away. I'll, I'll be honest with you. There are times that it's like, this mm. is too hard. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know it's that never draining that. afterward. It's more No, uplifting. I would say the opposite. Yeah, it's, more... it's uplifting. Mm -hmm. Now, I might drain myself in overthinking, oh, I should have done this better. I should by judging yeah. myself or <laughs> judging the reading. That right. can make me feel down. But but most times it makes me feel so much better. Yeah, that's that's awesome. You know, what what it, yeah. What it's a, like it's... anything you do in life though. Yeah. If it's what you're supposed to be doing, you'll feel you can do it for eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours and not get tired of it. Can't wait to get up the next day and do it again. So I want people to be able to connect with you. And of course, um, any links that you have to how they can connect with you, we will put up in the video description. But do you want to share any current projects you're working on or oops, excuse me, or um. Okay. Yeah, how how people can connect with you. So let's see, right now, um, we are, it's an in-person in the state of Maryland, um, but it, we are eventually going to take it online, we hope, okay. it's going to be working with intuitive and sensitive children. So we have, um, cool. there's a young man by the name of Ethan, I think Ethan's 11, he was on the TV show A&E's um, Psychic Kids, The Next Generation, I think. Oh, okay. He was episode one. Um, and he's local. And his mom and, and, and Ethan are getting together and are going to work with the parents and the kids to get an understanding and to help the parent to learn how to support the child. So that wow. we're having our first one, November 20th. Um, wow, cool. And I'm great. excited to see where that's going to go. And then I am coming up in January. We have a 10 month mediumship course um, that we teach every, I teach with uh, Lillian Morales. We teach under the name uh, oh. Soul Side Out. Okay. I'm, I'm going to be interviewing her. <laughs> 
I do. Yeah. Ah, if you got your hands full with her. Cool. I All love right. her. I love her. I do. Um, but we've been teaching together since 2014, 2015, I think. Wow. Okay. Um, and the course is now become expanded to a 10 month course. Uh, we work on it every year. And so that starts in January. And then I have an in-person retreat in Maryland for trance and physical mediumship. It's oh. uh, five days on wow. a, an amazing venue on the Eastern shore of Maryland with uh, Joe Bradley and Paul Newman, who are from England. If okay. they can get here, if they are supposed to open up the airfare soon. So, yeah. but that's April 1st to the 5th. Wow. So those are the big things um, that's a lot. I have going on. Yeah, there's lots more, but those are the big ones right now. Wow. Yeah. Uh, very, that's awesome. That's, and I'm and bef- I know we're running out of time before we have to <laughs> sign off. Uh, I just want to make sure that if there's anything else on your heart, please share. Um, I don't like to leave anything that, you know, spirit might be saying, oh, wait, don't forget to say this thing. So I just want to have that open to you before we have to say goodbye. But this has been really cool. Um, I've every, enjoyed it. I, I yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited that, I mean, all of these interviews, I'm learning something new. It seems like every time I do them. <laughs> um, and I just, I really appreciate you taking this time to share with us your beautiful gift and thank you um i just want to thank everyone for watching uh this has been julie mcveigh with unordinary made ordinary and i do hope you'll join us next time for another fascinating interview and if you enjoyed this interview please give it a thumbs up and um if you like two thumbs up two (laughs) thumbs up as many thumbs up as you can (laughs) And uh, yeah, if you, you know, please subscribe if you like this type of content and then hit the bell icon so you'll be alerted to future videos. And yeah, I am, I'm also uploading these uh, to podcast format. So I know when I say these things, the podcast format will, it'll be a different format. So there's no, I don't think there's a bell icon on those, but anyway. It's all good. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're having a wonderful day or evening, wherever you are on the planet or off the planet. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks.